Nothing brings people together like La Ventanita. The walk-up windows where Miami meets to drink Cuban coffee and swap stories. I'm Carlos Frias, the Miami Herald food editor. In each episode of La Ventanita, we'll talk with some of the world's best chefs to get a window into their lives while tasting some strong Cuban coffee and some delicious traditional Cuban snacks. Norman Van Aken invented the term fusion cuisine. He hitchhiked his way to Key West where he became one of the great innovators in American cuisine. He talked to us about his time as a traveling carny. So I just climbed up the side of the Ferris wheel wheel and I got about, you know, higher than the roof line here, up in the air, holding on to the, the wheel of the Ferris wheel. How working manual labor with immigrants exposed him to new flavors. When we'd take this break around 10 a.m., it was still like warm, the cheese was melting, the chorizo was warm. And the one book that changed his life. That day, though, I went to, to a bookstore on Duval Street in Key West. It was 1978. I don't even know how I had enough money to buy the book. He invited us to his new restaurant in Wynwood, and we brought Cuban coffee and pastelitos with us. You know, I love the, uh, the idea of, uh, you know, the different people coming and being a part of this conversation through um, Las Ventanitas. Right. Yeah, it's like, this is where Miami, this is where we swap stories, you know? This what brought you, a uh, kid from the Midwest, down to, to, to Key West, of all places, like the zaniest, craziest, free-form place of, in like the U.S., I think? It is, uh, yeah. O largest open-air sanitarium. Um, <laughs> I, my mom and dad, when they were together, which wasn't for long, but when they were together, uh, every Christmas they would um, load us up, get on the Delta jet, and we'd come down to Miami Beach and have uh, 10 glorious days in the sun during the Christmas vacation. And it just got into my heart and my mind, my soul, and I, you know, my, the, the magic of Florida, the magic of the ocean, the sunlight, the palm trees, the, the smell of suntan lotion, swimming in the pool at the hotel and being given a quarter and being able to go to the ice cream machine and to have a nutty buddy for breakfast and all that freedom that I failed. I, I wrapped it in my head about Florida. I had not yet worked in a restaurant. I only thought about writing or something like that as a way to make a living, but I was almost too worried about the rejection of what it would mean not to have a manuscript accepted. Hmm. Uh, played a little bit in bands, but I worked more like jobs like um, hot tire roofer, um, factory work, uh, a different, three different kinds of factory work. Um, I, I mowed lawns on a golf course one summer. I worked as a uh, carnival worker one summer, but I had a, an accident one night where I was trying to uh, move one of the carts on the uh, Ferris wheel so the truck could get through so we could break the Ferris wheel down and move to the next town. And um, this, like, you know, where you put your feet in a Ferris wheel? Right. Well, that thing was just a few inches in the way of this truck getting through. And so I said, that's no problem. I was a gymnast in high school, so I just climbed up the side of the Ferris wheel wheel and I got about, you know, higher than the roof line here, up in the air, holding on to the, the wheel of the Ferris wheel and then I took my foot to push the cart, the, the, the thing back would hold your feet, and I connected the Ferris wheel because it wasn't grounded. Oh my so God. the electricity started to pulse through me, and I could just see my hands on the side of the Ferris wheel, just, they wouldn't come off from Earth. And I was like. You were a human resistor. I was, I was, I was not passive, but I was, <laughs> I, it's so weird because your brain is electrically impulsed. And so I was thinking, I'm in hell. I gotta get out of hell. And I, then I kicked up my feet right by my hands and I pushed myself off the Ferris wheel that way. But now I'm coming out of, off the Ferris wheel. In free fall. Free fall. And, uh, but my back hit this guy wire and slowed me just a little. And then this uh, man from Mexico caught my head before I hit the asphalt. Wow, he, he caught your he head. He caught my head, from, yeah. From landing on the and ground. I just laid there like trembling and thinking, I gotta find something else to do for work. This, these things aren't working out. Actually, good way to keep ah. this going. Do you want a little Cuban coffee? I, of course. So I had a job as a hot tire roofer, and um, and one day, the the uh, one afternoon, it was summertime. Thank you. It was summertime. A storm came along. Cheers. Cheers. Big, big rainstorm. Ooh, Ooh. yeah, man. And so um, I zipped down the ladder off the roof of the high, this high school where we were working. Oh my God. Started rolling around in the grass, oh celebrating God. the storm and the fact that it was washing the dust and the 
sticky tar off of us and my and out of my hair and all of that. And I'm rolling around on the ground and suddenly I hit something like a human form and I'm like, look up and it was my boss. Wow. And he was like, we don't need you. So I, um, so I was like, for 15 minutes, I was like very happy. And then I realized since I got in my car and drove away that rent was coming. You actually hitchhiked down yeah. to Florida? Yeah. And that was yeah. a real, that, that was an actual journey, not just a physical one, but for you as a person, I would imagine, coming down too. I had no intention of this being, you know, a career. I didn't know it to be a career. I didn't know anything about um, the chef's life. I didn't know anything about uh, um, cooking colleges, cooking schools. It wasn't in in my thought process. The people I worked with in those first five years were working class people that could have been uh, house painters or plumbers and many. Move tars, carnies. Mm -hmm. Could have been. A yeah, yeah. Um, short order cooking, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I got to a place in Key West where I was working the pier house. And uh, I first saw people who were younger than me, who were graduating from the Culinary Institute of America, come into there, or were there when I got there, and they knew things I had no knowledge of. And it really kind of got to me that they used terminology that I didn't know what it was. You didn't like to feel at a step. I didn't. I didn't like to feel like, you know, someone could know something that, that it had to do with a type of knowledge that I could avail myself to if I knew how to do it. This is before the internet. And so um, that day, though, I went to, to a bookstore on Duval Street in Key West. It was 1978. I don't even know how I had enough money to buy the book, but I bought James Beard's Theory and Practice of Good Cooking. And that was, that was my first book. You want to try some pastelitos? I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to break open the box myself. No, but yes. let's do it. Well, so I have a little bit of everything. I bought. I got some guava. I have some cheese and some meat pastelitos, uh, and also some house croquetas, ham croquetas. This is my weakness, you know, not not desserts per se, but the combination of pastelitos and a cortadito. Well, that's my that's my that's my weakness. That's right? your weakness. Uh -huh. You're the progenitor of the phrase fusion fusion cuisine. Mm -hmm. Like it had never for folks who was you know who here who put fusion cuisine next to anything, particularly anything Asian. I think being in, you know being a person who's outside of a specific culture mm -hmm. gave me the license to be inquisitive, and then begin to do crossovers that maybe I would have felt inhibited by had I been specifically you know from Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic or from. This is funny for me to say because the way I look like, you know, a gringo, but, you know, from Haiti or from uh, Cuba. But being, you know, just being in these different places, which I think I was very fortunate that it started in Key West where it was almost more primitive. That there, there wasn't such a crush of different things that to absorb. It gave me a little time to slowly absorb the, the uniqueness of what is the difference between or the similarities between, say, Bahamian cuisine and Cuban cuisine. So it gave me those years there to where I was tasting it. And, you know, it's like a musician finding notes. You're going to, or riffs, you go, wow, that was a cool riff. But what if I did it with that? You know, what if I applied this French technique with this Spanish technique, with this Latin technique? What if I married, um, you know, a classic, Bernays, but I added some moho into it. What would that be like? You know, and so my mind worked in that general way. And I'm sure the first time a kid from the Midwest had chorizo, who appreciates food, his head exploded, right? Yeah, I was working as a, uh, I was working pumping concrete uh, in the fields of Kansas. And yeah, the, the laborers shared their meals with me from, from Mexico. And they had, even, they were still warm. The, the wives had packed their, their lunches in a way that Things were tight in the, in the aluminum foil to where when we'd take this break around 10 a.m., it was still like warm and the cheese was melting, the chorizo was warm. And we would just sit there with this astonishing level of hunger because we'd been working with, I mean, heavy labor. Sure. Tough labor for a few hours all through that. And I think where your whole body's humming for hours afterwards. Throbbing, throbbing. And, you're, and the sweat is just coming out of your shoes. I mean, it's just crazy. Oh, well, it's Thanks great again, to have Jeff. you here. Yeah, it was great to be here today. Thank you. We'll man. do it again. Absolutely. Next time, over sushi. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's pick a spot and go there. La ventanita, the sushi ventanita. <laughs> <laughs>